Fred, do you have a minute right now to talk to me? Something has happened and it's very important that I talk to you. Are you at work right now? I have a feeling that you are, but if you're able to, then please give me a message back. Hey dad, what's going on? What's happened that is so important? I'm actually at work right now and I really shouldn't be using my phone too much. If my manager sees me, then I'm gonna get chewed out about it by my boss. If there's one thing they hate, it's employees using their phones during work hours. Can this wait until I finish at 5 p.m. today? Then I can talk to you properly with no problems. If you're really busy, then I can hold off, but it's something that you should really know as soon as possible. Like I said, it's very important, and even if you're seen, I'm sure they won't chew you about it. They'll understand, or at least I hope they will. Okay, I don't know what could be so important, but then go ahead and tell me if you think it is. I know that you wouldn't blow something up to make it seem more important than it really is. Go on, tell me then. What's this all about? I'm afraid that this is not happy news. It's about your mother. She's in the hospital right now. I'm with her. What? Why? What happened to her? Is she okay? She's doing alright for the moment. I mean, as much as she can be. But I'll be honest with you in that it sounds quite serious according to the doctors. Nothing's been confirmed, but like I said, it's quite serious. What did they say? What happened? Was she in an accident or something? No, it's not because of anything that sudden or a freak accident or anything like that. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It's her kidneys that are playing up again. Maybe a freak accident would have been better because it means that once she recovers, she'll be fine. But now that it's an underlying health problem, you just never know exactly how well they can cure this or if they can fix her at all. Really? Again? I thought that they had been sorted out. Wasn't that why she was there a few years back? Is it the same thing that happened with her back then? Or is it something different this time around? Yeah, that was why she had to be in the hospital a few years ago, and we thought that everything was okay. But even then, the doctor said that there was a chance that things could go south again. She was in good health more or less for the past few years, but it seems as though things have taken a turn for the worse. She had a seizure last night, and I had to call her an ambulance to take her to the emergency room. They ran some tests, and it turns out that she's going through kidney failure. It's much worse than it was a few years back, and they said that she has to undergo dialysis. Her kidneys can't clean her blood on their own anymore, and she needs a machine to do it for her. And then we'll have to wait and see how effective that is. Oh my god, and then what? She has to be hooked up to a machine for her entire life? It really depends a lot on many different variables. She might be able to recover some kidney function after a while, or she might have to get a kidney transplant. It's really a little too early to say anything with much certainty, but that sounds like the way it's heading. I wanted to let you know as soon as I could. She's in a decent shape right now, all things considered, and I'm sure that she would feel much better if you could come and visit her and talk to her for a bit. I don't know when you might be able to do that, but any chance that you could come by soon, it would do her some good to see your face. Of course, I'll go today. I'm gonna go right now and ask my boss if I can have the rest of the day off, and I'll go straight to the hospital. Give me the details of where she is exactly. Are you there with her now? Yes, I haven't left her side pretty much since they brought her in last night. They tried to send me home, but I refused. What am I supposed to do at home while my wife is in the hospital? I stayed here the whole night instead. Okay, good. I'll let you know when I'm ready to leave work. But Dad, why didn't you tell me this last night when Mom first had to get taken to the hospital? Oh, I'm sorry about that, Fred. I would have, but it was just that so much was going on at the same time, and then by the time things had calmed down, it was the morning and I ended up falling asleep myself. Oh, you have to forgive me for that. I slipped up a little bit. I was even thinking about sending you a message, but when I sat down, I didn't have time to send it before I fell asleep. I actually woke up and had your number open on my screen, ready to text. I was so close last night, but still so far. No, of course, I understand, Dad. I'm not mad or anything, it's just that I wanted to have known right away. Anyways, thanks for telling me what's going on. I'll see you soon. I'll be there as quick as I can. Mom, 
Dad told me what happened. I came as soon as I could. How are you? How are you feeling? Is everything okay? You're not in any pain right now, are you? Dad said that you had a seizure. Did you hit yourself on the way down at all? Oh, Fred. Thanks so much for coming. I'm so sorry that you had to leave work for little old me. And so many questions. I don't even remember what the first one that you asked me was anymore. You need to calm down. You seem to be more worked up about this than I am. For the moment, let's suffice it to say that I'm fine as I can be, I suppose. I don't feel as bad as I did last night in any case. Sorry for coming at you with so many questions just then. I know it's not the best thing to do. I'm very worried though. And don't worry about work. That's not important at all. I'm sorry that I didn't come earlier. Dad only told me what happened a little while ago. Oh, you will have to forgive your father for that. He was up all night here with me making sure that I was okay and then he fell asleep. Out like a light he was. Poor thing had to sleep here on these uncomfortable chairs. The nurses tried to send him home, but he refused and stayed with me. He could have slept in our nice comfortable bed if he had gone home. And just how do you expect me to have even slept at all like that? I couldn't relax in bed while you were here, honey, you know that. And I already explained to Fred why I wasn't able to contact him sooner. It's alright, I understand. So what are the doctors saying then? Dad said that you had a seizure, uh, what could have caused that? We don't know the full details just yet. They ran some tests and we're waiting for the results to come back. And I assume that there will be even more tests later on as well to fully understand exactly what is going on in my body. But don't they have some idea already? Surely they can make a guess as to what caused that? I mean, a seizure isn't an everyday thing to happen. And you've never even been prone to anything like that in the past, right? It sounds like a pretty serious symptom to have had. No, I have never had a seizure before. Not until last night, anyway. They say that it's definitely something to do with my kidneys, but they haven't been able to fully explain what the next steps are. My kidneys have always been the one weak thing about me, so it makes sense that now they're the ones acting up and causing all of this trouble. It turns out that seizures can be part of the symptoms of kidney failure. Now, with my history of kidney issues, that's most likely what's going on right now, but it hasn't been confirmed just yet. It's a shame that I have had to get you and George all worked up about this. I don't want to be any trouble to anybody, you know. Don't worry about any of that at all, Mom, please. You know it's not any trouble for us to come and see you or look after you. I don't want you to even think that this is a burden on us at all. Right, Dad? He's completely right, dear. We'll be here with you until you're well enough to get discharged and come home again. If there's anything that you ever need, please make sure you let us know. Remember that I'm only a phone call away, and I'll make sure that I come by as often as I can. You don't have to do that, you know. I'm not on my way out just yet. It will take a little more than this to take me out. It's not something that I have to do. It's something that I want to do. You're my mom. I'm not going to sit by and live my life as though you're not in the hospital right now. Just stop saying such silly things, okay? We're here for you. Thank you, Fred. I know that I can always count on you. I have always been able to do that. Even ever since you were young. Hey, where have you been? I thought you were supposed to finish work at 5 today as you usually do. You should have been home hours ago already. I'm not happy about you being this late. I told you before that if you want to go out with friends or do something after work, then you need to run it by me first. I want to know what you're up to. Do I really have to repeat myself this many times? Hey, sorry about that, but I didn't go out with friends or anything like that. Something pretty serious happened today. Not to me directly, but you know. I got a message from my dad, and then I had to leave work early to meet him and my mom. You won't believe what happened. It is really terrible. You left work early and you're still home this late? What the hell were you doing then? This just makes things sound worse and worse for you. Do you realize that? You might think it sounds better, but it does not. Just wait a second and listen to what I have to say. My mom's in the hospital. I was visiting her there. What? 
She's in the hospital. Why would she be there? She has always been very healthy. Don't lie to me. This isn't a time like when you're in college and tell your professors that your grandparents are sick or dying in order to get out of some classes. That won't work on me, got it? I'm not doing anything like that at all. She really is in the hospital. And she hasn't always been that healthy. I mean, she is relatively healthy, but it's not like she hasn't had any issues at all. So, do you remember how she was in the hospital a few years ago because of her kidneys? Well, there's something wrong with them again. I do remember that, but I thought that she had been cured of whatever it was back then. Are you telling me that the same thing has sent her back to the hospital again? Does that really happen? We all thought that, but there was always the chance of it flaring back up again in the future, and I guess that's what happened. It's not fully confirmed exactly what is going on right now, but the one thing that is more or less confirmed is that the cause of the issue are her kidneys. She had a seizure last night and had to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Apparently, these sorts of seizures can be a sign of kidney failure in the later stages. She might have to be hooked up to a machine that cleans her blood for her, since it might be that her kidneys can't even function the way that they're supposed to. But isn't that why humans have two kidneys? So that if one of them gets messed up, then the other one can take over the functions? I thought that we also only need one and the second one is like a backup. Yeah, you're right. We do only need one technically, but of course it's always better to have both. But in this case, it seems like mom's kidneys are both messed up and don't function properly. Maybe they still function a little, but not enough even when taken together. I see. That's a shame. Well, you still could have messaged me, right? You had plenty of time to do that. Sending a text only takes a second or two. Yeah, you're right there. Sorry about that. I was just really flustered and I couldn't really think straight, you know? I wanted to make sure that I got to the hospital as soon as I could to see her. And then once I got there, we were just talking for ages and it slipped my mind. And you were there right up until now? I didn't think visiting hours would go so long. You didn't text me for such a long time. You must have been doing something else. If you were just in the hospital, you would have definitely had some time to grab your phone and send one off. Where did you go after? You must have done something else. Don't lie to me now, either. I can tell when you do. I didn't really do anything, but I just sat in my car for a while. I didn't know what to do and I couldn't really force myself to drive just yet. I'm really worried about my mom. This might be it. Oh, I hope not, but the possibility is there. You just sat in your car for hours on end? What the hell is wrong with you? What a waste of time that is! And even then you couldn't text me? And what else is that you're talking about? The possibility of what? What are you on about? Yeah, well, it felt sort of calming to sit in the car. It was quiet and it seemed separate from everything going on outside. And I mean that she might not make it this time. The doctors at the hospital are still running tests to figure out exactly what's going on. But it might be a really bad issue with her kidneys. So she might die? Is that basically what you're trying to say in a very roundabout way? To put it simply, yeah, she might. I'm also worried about my dad. I don't know how he'll be able to deal with something like that. He will deal with it fine, won't he? It's not like he is a child or something. This is your dad. Plus, if there is some warning as there is right now, then he will have time to prepare himself. He must have gone through people dying around him at this point. He's not young anymore. Well, of course he has, but we're talking about his wife, my mom. They've been together since they were in their 20s. It's been decades that they've been together almost every single day. This is going to be very different to an old relative dying or even a friend. I don't think it's really possible to properly prepare yourself for something like the death of someone so close to you. I'm sure he will be fine. People can get over anything with time. And your dad will be no different, I think. Mm, maybe, but this will take a long time for him to get over, if he ever manages to. I'm just worried about him. Even if he manages to be strong and get through this, he is still my dad and I don't want him to be in any pain. I'm sure he will be fine. Anyway, sorry about your mom, but make sure that you're still letting me know what you're doing. I don't want to be sitting here wondering if you're out with some other woman while I'm at home on my own. 
Don't be ridiculous. Of course I'm not doing something like that. Why would you even say that? You can say that all you want, but that's what cheaters say too, isn't it? They don't just admit it when they have done something wrong. I'm just saying that I want to know where you are. So make sure that you message me from now on, okay? Sure, fine. I'll make sure to do that. I'm pretty exhausted at the moment, so I'm going to go to bed now. Right now? It's not even that late and I haven't seen you all day since you left for work. I know, but I'm mentally very drained. I think I need to have a really early night tonight. Otherwise, I won't be able to function tomorrow at all. You're home this late and you don't even want to spend time with me? Oh, Leona, please. This has nothing to do with that or with not wanting to spend time with you. I'm just stressed and tired. Fine then. Go to bed. Where are you? It's already 8 p.m. You should be home right now. What's going on this time? Where are you and why aren't you back home? What do you mean I told you that I was going to go visit my mom again tonight after work? Did you forget that or something? I made sure to tell you about that. I know for a fact that I did. No, I remember that you told me that. But how long do you really need to spend with her? If you went there right after work, then it's been three hours already. That has to be more than enough time, doesn't it? How long could you possibly need there? I told you that she might not have a lot of time left. I want to make sure that I spend as much time with her as I can while she's still around. I need to make it count. There might not be another chance later on. Who knows when this could take a turn for the worse. And what about spending time with me? Have you forgotten that you have a wife waiting for you at home? I didn't think that I would have to be waiting at home for you while you're with another woman. That wasn't anything I imagined when we got married. Another woman? Are you really talking about my sick mother like that? What is going on with you? Don't call her that or refer to her in any other similar way. You're overreacting and you need to stop. My mom is in the hospital and I want to spend time with her. What is so hard for you to understand about that? It should be pretty straightforward to understand why I'm with her. I don't see why I have to keep explaining myself about this. And at the expense of not spending time with me? Do you think spending time with her is more important than me then? Sorry, but right now? It kind of is, yes. I might not have that many more chances in the future at this rate. What? How could you even say that to me? That's not the answer that I was looking for. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is supposed to be more important than being with me. How are you so stupid that you can't see that? I can't believe this. What do you want me to say? My mom is dying. You're not. I need to make sure I see her as much as I possibly can while it's still possible. We have plenty of time to spend with each other later, but right now the situation is just a little different. And I'm not saying that I don't want to be with you right now or anything, but I have to prioritize my mom for the moment. It sounds like you don't want to be around me though, no matter what you might say. And I think I should be your top priority all of the time. You are my top priority, but this is a very special circumstance. Why are you being so selfish right now? I need to be your top priority all of the time. And what? I am being selfish because I want my husband to care about me? Well, sorry. I didn't realize that I was asking you for so much. Here I was thinking that a husband looking out for his wife was just the standard, bare minimum of what is supposed to happen in a relationship. I guess I was wrong. Silly me. Please, just stop being like this. I don't know how else to explain to you what is going on right now. I mean, my mom is literally dying. You're acting like I always neglect you or something like that, which is not true in the slightest. Can't you just put up with this for a little while? I need to visit her, but I will be home more often when either she gets better or the other thing happens. I don't really want to think about that right now, though. Whatever. You can think about it on the couch tonight because that's where you're going to be sleeping. I'm not going to wait up for you or cook you anything either, so you better not be expecting that when you get home. Have fun in the hospital with your mom. But I don't need to even tell you that, do I? You seem to love being there.
Are you visiting your mom again? Seriously? How many times do you have to go? Can you even come home straight after work even once? Hey, yeah, I am. Look, we have talked about this so many times already. There's nothing new for me to say about it. My mom is sick and I'll be visiting her as often as I can. That's the end of the conversation. And you couldn't even message me about it this time? Do I have to keep telling you that all the time too? I just made a guess that you wouldn't be home tonight until later since you're not back yet. I am sick of having to ask you to text me about it. Just get it into your head and do it. I shouldn't have to remind you every single day. Okay, sure, maybe I forget sometimes, but does it really matter? You know where I'm going to be even if I don't text you about it each day. I've been going after work each day and I'm going to keep doing that as long as I need to. This is my mom we're talking about, so I'm not just going to stop randomly one day. I don't care! I still expect you to message me when I have explicitly asked you to do that for me. Sending a text isn't that much of an ask, is it? Can you really not just do this one thing for me without making it into a big deal? Okay, sure, texting you isn't a big deal. I just forget to do it sometimes. It's not like I'm keeping anything from you. I just forget, but then let me tell you something before I forget. I'm gonna stay at my dad's place tonight, so I won't be home at all. What? Why would you do that? Why stay there? You're not going to come home tonight then? No, not tonight. I'll go there and stay there the night and then head to work from there tomorrow morning. I'll be home tomorrow night. I'm still gonna visit my mom again tomorrow, but I'll be home after that as I normally am. But why would you go and stay there when you could just come home and stay here? Don't you spend enough time with him at the hospital? He's always there with you too, isn't he? Yeah, he is with me, but it's not really the same in the hospital. We can't just talk normally in a way. He's always worried about my mom, and then I feel bad for him since he always has to go home to an empty house. I thought that if I stay there, he'll be able to get his mind off the situation at least for a little bit and have a bit of normalcy in his life, you know? Maybe he can relax a little more and we can just chat or watch something on TV and have a regular evening that he would have been having otherwise. So you care that your dad is at home by himself, but not about me when I'm alone all the time? What the hell is up with that? Since when am I less important than everyone else in your life, huh? You're not alone all the time. Don't be so dramatic. I might be coming home later than I used to, but I still come home when you're not alone at night. And you're not less important than anyone else either. Please stop saying things like that because I don't think like that at all. And what about tonight then? I am going to be alone tonight, aren't I? You might not think like that, but you sure do act like that. And I think that that is a little more important. You know the saying, don't you? Actions speak louder than words. Well, yeah, I guess. But this is just one night that we're talking about here. I'm sure you'll manage. And I'm not acting in any sort of way. Just please stop acting like this. You're just going to be alone this one night. It's not the end of the world, and it doesn't mean that I don't care about you. That is a ridiculous thing to say. You know what? I don't even care. Go and do what you want. You don't even have to come back for a few nights if you don't want to be around me so much. I am going to go out with some friends tonight instead. I don't care if you're here or not. I can at least spend some time with some people who actually care about me that way. I don't know why I even bother trying to get you to think about me in the first place. But I am sick of it. I shouldn't have to force you or beg you to pay me some attention. Please stop being like that. You know that I care about you, but I care about my parents as well. Why can't you see that I care about you and them at the same time? This is just one moment where the circumstances are really bad and they don't allow me to spend as much time with you as I would like or as you would like. It sucks, but there's not much that can be done about it right now. You don't seem to care about me enough. It doesn't matter. As I said, do what you want. I will go out and have fun with friends. I don't need you to enjoy myself. I can do that on my own. In fact, I will have even more fun without you than if you were here. It's been quite a little while since I have been out with them for a big night. Maybe I should get back into the habit. Leona, come on. You don't need to get so angry about things like this. 
I just need to care for my parents right now. My mom is deathly sick and my dad is going through a very hard time. Who else is going to help them through it if it isn't me? This is what family is supposed to do. Your dad has friends, doesn't he? Why don't they go and spend time with him at home instead of you? Of course he does, but it's not the same. This is a family issue, and he can't exactly be asking friends his age to come and have a sleepover with him. They have wives as well. They can't just leave them at home and spend the night at my dad's house. And what about you? You're a grown man with a wife at home, aren't you? Why is it wrong for him to call them over, but not you? Because I'm his son. I used to live in that house for most of my life as well. I think that's quite a different story. It won't matter if my dad wants to go to bed or do his own thing. I can still just be there with him for moral support and feel comfortable because I know the house so well. With friends, he'll probably feel like he has to entertain them and keep them busy even if he's drained and not up to it. It'll make it much easier if it's me. And I was the one who suggested it anyway. He wouldn't have asked me on his own, just like he wouldn't have asked any of his friends to do the same so that he isn't being a burden on them. It sounds like your dad has a bit more sense than you do then. You can't see the burden that you are putting onto your own home life, can you? What burden? I've told you a thousand times that this is important. Don't act as though I'm not coming home because I'm out drinking with friends or doing something else like that. I bet you're not even going to stay at your dad's, are you? I bet you're using this as an excuse for something else. Now that you have the perfect alibi, you could tell me that you're looking after your dad and then go out and just do whatever it is that you want. Am I right? What are you talking about? What else would I be doing? Why would I lie to you about something like this in the first place? Seriously, Leona, what are you talking about? You're not making any sense at all. I just think it's very interesting how your mom gets sick and then you're coming home late every single night because you're visiting her in the hospital each day. And now all of a sudden you're not even going to be coming home tonight because you're going to be staying with your dad? Sure thing, Fred! I am sure that you will be at your dad's house tonight and not at anybody else's. You're just using this as an excuse to cheat on me, aren't you? You think that using this excuse means that I won't think twice about the circumstances and won't question anything about what you do, right? Well, you're wrong about that. I can see through this just fine. Are you accusing me of cheating on you? Is this actually happening? Listen to me, Leona. That's not what is going on. Nothing like that is happening and it never will. Not only would I never cheat on you, but I also would never try and use my mom's health problems as an excuse or as an alibi. Yeah, I'm so sure about that. Why should I believe anything that you say? There's no proof that you are where you say you are. You can call my dad right now and ask him if what I say is true. You have his number, don't you? And so what if I do? You have probably told him what he should say to me in case I ever called, right? He's probably in on the whole thing himself. You're acting crazy right now. My dad is not in on anything because there is nothing to be in on. If you won't call him and check yourself, then how else am I supposed to even prove to you that I'm staying there? I shouldn't even have to prove anything in the first place. This is an insane thing for you to accuse me of with no evidence and for no reason. This is how cheating starts. The husband starts coming home late and then staying elsewhere some nights. Then before you know it, Boom! The truth comes out and you find out that he has been sleeping with a secretary for the last six months. Secretary? What are you even on about? I don't even have a secretary. Are you just talking about the plot to some TV show or movie or something? Just because that happened in some show doesn't mean that is what I'm doing right now. I've told you everything honestly and there is nothing else to say about that. Please stop acting like this. I don't understand what is happening with you. I know I've been staying away from home and coming home late recently, but I've explained why that is and I think that what I'm doing makes sense because of the circumstances. This is an important family emergency and I need to be there for both my parents. I just need you to bear with it for a little longer and understand where I'm coming from. What would you do if your parents were the ones who were sick? Would you be there by their bedside all the time like I'm doing, wouldn't you? I don't know. They're not sick so there's no point in talking about it. But when is there time to go, then it's their time to go. What? How can you even say something like that about them? 
It's not like I can do anything for them if they're sick. That's the doctor's job, and I would just be getting in the way if I was there all the time like you are. Sick people need peace and quiet and rest. Not someone knocking on their door every three seconds wanting to talk to them. But seeing family and friends that they care about is also really important to them for their morale. People recover better when they're in good moods. Whatever, it doesn't matter anymore. You're not coming home tonight anyway, so I don't even want to talk about it anymore. You might not be going out to drink, but that's exactly what I am going to do tonight. And don't bother texting me later. I am going to turn my phone off when I am out. I don't want to talk to you anymore for a while. Have fun sleeping on the couch there. Okay, well, do try and enjoy yourself. It's not a bad idea for you to go out with your friends, you know? I'll see you tomorrow night, though. Maybe we should talk about all of this a little more seriously then. Thanks for coming to stay with me tonight. You really didn't have to go out of your way to do that for your old man, though. I'm not so sure there will be much around here to keep you entertained. Not a lot going on here these days. That's quite alright, Dad. I don't mind at all. We can just have a chat and call it an early night if you're feeling tired. No, no. I haven't been doing much these days, so it's actually pretty hard for me to get to sleep early. You have to keep busy if you want to just be able to sleep at will. And when you get to my age, you'll realize that you don't even need to sleep as much as you used to. That would have been more helpful to me when I was younger and could have used the extra hours in the day to do other things. But that's how it goes, I suppose. Right. I've heard people say that you don't need 8 or 9 hours of sleep anymore after a certain age. I can't say that I'm looking forward to that. If there is one thing that I love, it's sleeping. Nothing beats sleeping in on a lazy weekend and not having too many pressing things to do. It really is one of life's greatest moments if you ask me. Waking up and realizing that there is no alarm, no work to be done, and you can just stay in bed as long as you want. You better make use of your youth and energy while you still can, son. You will really notice when it's gone, believe me. I know, but it doesn't hurt to take it easy every once in a while either. And I'm exaggerating as well, I don't ever wake up after 10am. That's the absolute latest. It's nice to be back home though, I don't think that I've been here for quite some time. Usually it's just you and mom who come over to mine for dinner and not the other way around. Yes, well, your mom and I always thought that that would be better for everyone. That way you and Leona wouldn't have to drive home after dinner. It might only save you a little bit of time, but it's better than nothing. Your mom and I don't work anymore, so there's nothing that we need to rush home to do and we certainly don't have to wake up early if we don't want to. Well, thanks for thinking of us, but it wouldn't be too much of a big deal for us to come here every once in a while as well. Maybe we'll make a bigger effort to do that once mom is back from the hospital. Yeah, well, that's if she manages to make it back. Oh, come on, Dad. Don't talk like that. You know that she'll be fine. She just needs some time to recover and she'll be back before you know it. I sure do hope so. It's tough for me to see her be laid up in that hospital bed every day and not be here at home where she should be. I know, Dad, but she'll be back soon enough. Anyway, let's not talk about that for the moment, though. We've had nothing else to think about but that recently. You're right. Let's not do that. How's Leona going, then? I haven't seen her for some time, and she hasn't been around to visit Brianna either. Is she busy at the moment? Huh, well, uh, that's a little bit of a tricky question, if I'm being honest. She's been getting kind of upset with me for spending so much time at the hospital. And tonight as well, she got angry at me for staying at yours. No, I'm sorry that I'm causing problems for you. Maybe you should go and sleep at home after all. There's no point in having a fight with your wife just because you wanted to keep me company. No, it's okay. I'm here now and she said that she was going to go out with friends tonight anyway. I suppose she's just feeling a little bit lonely because I go to work early and I've been coming home quite late each night. I do wish she would be a little bit more understanding though. I think she's just making up some crazy stories in her mind about what I'm actually doing. What do you mean by that? She knows that you're visiting your mother in the hospital, doesn't she? She does know that in theory, but she thinks that I might just be saying that and then doing something else. Really? Like what? What does she think you're getting up to? Let's not talk about that either. 
It's a problem that the two of us need to sort out between us. No problem. I won't pry about things that don't concern me. Anyway, should I put the kettle on or something? Do you want something to eat or drink? Maybe, let's take a look in the kitchen and see what you have. I don't want anything too big, but a light snack would be nice. Bread, there won't be any need for you to visit the hospital today after work. Not today and not anymore from now on. What do you mean? I always go, why wouldn't I go this time? Did mom say that she wanted a little bit of time to herself or something? Why would I just stop going all of a sudden? That doesn't make any sense. No, it's not anything like that. If you think about it, then I'm sure that you'll catch on to what I'm trying to say to you. I'm sorry, I'm afraid that she's gone. She's moved on to somewhere better than here, son. What do you mean? You can't be serious, right, Dad? I saw her just yesterday. We talked for hours and she was totally okay. She didn't seem any worse than she was before. Maybe she wasn't better, but she didn't seem any worse either. How did this happen? I'm not quite sure, Fred, but the doctors told me that this can sometimes happen when it comes to kidney failure. A person might seem fine and right as rain, and the next day, they're simply just not here anymore. I guess that this is what happened to your mom. She took a sudden turn for the worse that even the machines were not able to keep her alive anymore. Oh my god, this is so sudden, Dad. I didn't expect that I would ever hear the news like this. Anything but in this way, you know? I'm sorry that I had to tell you over the phone. But I didn't want you to head over to the hospital expecting to see her and then get a nasty surprise when you arrive. Right. Uh, I just can't believe that she's really gone. I still had a lot of hope that she would be okay. That she would be out of the hospital and back with you at home as normal. I hoped that that would be the case as well. But it seemed that this was not to be the ending that we got. I know that you must be feeling a lot right now. I certainly am. But we need to focus and get the funeral preparations ready. Once that is all done, we can finally grieve as we would like to. I would also like to bring something to the nurses who were looking after her while she was in the hospital. Your mom always mentioned how nice they were and how well they treated her. We need to give them something special to show our appreciation for making her day a little better when neither you nor I was able to be there with her. I just wouldn't feel right about it if we just left things as they were and didn't do something to show our thanks. Of course, Dad, uh, don't worry. I'll help you with those in any way that I can. Listen, I'll try to get the rest of the day off and then go to yours to visit. You're there right now, aren't you? Yeah, there's nowhere else for me to be now that there's nothing for me to do at the hospital anymore. Okay, well, I'll see you in 30 minutes or so and then we can get right on thinking about what we'll do for the funeral. Don't worry, you don't have to do any of this on your own. Oh? What's this? You're home right after work for once? Why even bother at this point? I don't even care anymore whether you come home or not. Why not go and stay with your dad again? Leona, my mom passed away this morning. I came back now so that I could tell you in person. I didn't think that it was something that I should just say over text message. What? Really? You mean she really died? Yes, unfortunately she did. Her kidney started failing even though she was on dialysis. It didn't help her in the end. Well, you shouldn't be so surprised. You knew that this was coming and it was about time she went anyway. What did you just say? What? Why are you looking at me like that? You knew that she wasn't going to be around for much longer, didn't you? That's what you said yourself. That's why you were so set on visiting her all the time, wasn't it? Yeah, that's kind of true, but you don't have to say it like that, do you? It sounds like you don't even care. And it sounds like you're talking about something completely different, not someone dying. Okay, my bad. I was just saying what realistically is the truth. So, I guess you won't be staying out late after work anymore, right? I still need to help my dad with the funeral preparations, and he'll need me to be around during this time as well. But I guess I won't be home late every day like I've been doing. You're still not going to spend time with me then? It really seems like you will do anything to not be with me at home. What are you talking about? My mom just died. 
I need to be there for my dad, and I also need to sort out everything for the funeral. What else do you want me to do? Just leave everything up to him? To have my dad go through this all alone? Why can't he sort it out himself? It's not like you have some sort of experience or knowledge about funerals. You have never organized one before, have you? No, I haven't, but that's not why I need to help him. I need to help him because he's grieving, and something that huge is going to be a challenge for him emotionally. Fine, whatever. Just make sure to text me when you will be home late then. I have been going out with some friends a lot more recently, and I will use your absences as an excuse to meet up with them even more. Do you really have to go out every single time I don't come home straight after work? You can still be at home, you know? I don't see why it bothers you so much being here alone. If you're running around doing things, then why can't I do that too? You don't have the right to tell me what I can or can't do. Going out with friends and visiting my sick mother are two very different things, but whatever. I'm not telling you not to do it either. I'm just asking you why you feel the need to go out all the time. You didn't ever really do that before. Maybe I didn't do it before, but now I do. Things change and so do people. And I don't have to explain myself to you. I want to do something, so I will do it. That's the end of the conversation. Okay, whatever you say. Anyway, the date hasn't been decided just yet, but the funeral will be held sometime at the end of the week. You never visited my mom in the hospital, but you will be there, won't you? Yeah, yeah, just let me know later on then. Fred! There you are! I am so sorry for your loss. It's a terrible thing to have happened. Yes, Fred. We're both very upset to hear what happened to your mother. And she was still so young, too. Thank you, both of you. It's a real shame that she had to pass so young. She should still have had so many years ahead of her. But sometimes you can never tell when life is going to throw you some twist. I need to be strong for my dad now and help him get through this. He was completely inconsolable when the news came from the hospital. Of course. It must have been a big shock for both of you. I haven't seen our daughter around here just yet, though. Do you know where she is? You haven't seen Leona either? I thought that maybe you would have known where she is. No, we haven't seen her at all. Didn't you two come here together this morning? I'm afraid that we didn't. I stayed with my dad last night because I didn't want him to be on his own the night before the funeral. I thought it would be better for him for me to be around so that the house isn't so silent. Leona was supposed to come herself because of that. I wonder if she's running a little bit late. If you'll excuse me, I'll give her a quick message and see where she's getting held up. Of course, you go ahead and do that. We'll see you a little later on. Hey, where are you? I don't see you anywhere at all. You got the address that I sent you, right? I'm sure I sent it to you before. Maybe it would have been better to just go together after all. I just thought it was a good idea to spend the night before the funeral with my dad. Oh, you did send me the address, but I am not there. Are you running a little late? It's not that far away from home, though. It probably only takes about 30 minutes. I'm not late or anything like that. I just decided that I am not going to come. What do you mean you're not going to come? What else could that possibly mean? How can I even make that sentence even simpler for you? I'm not going. Are you seriously not coming to my mom's funeral? You're just going to stay at home? Why should I have to go to that? It's going to be all gloomy and there will be people crying and all that annoying stuff. I would much rather not be there if I don't have to be. This is my mom we're talking about. What do you mean you don't have to be here? Of course you have to be here. And why would that be? She's your mom, not mine. I don't see what my being there would do for anyone. It should be a family thing, if anything. There's no point in me going. You are part of the family, though. What are you even talking about? We're married, for God's sake. Yeah, but that's not real family. I mean, a funeral should be for the real family members. I can't believe that I'm hearing you say this sort of thing right now. What the hell is wrong with you? You can't even come pay your respects to my mom at her funeral? Is that too much to ask you to do? 
I put up with the fact that you didn't visit her in the hospital and held out some hope that she would make it through, but what is this? Even your parents are here. They've been looking for you for the past hour. How is it that they thought it necessary to come but not you? Even they wanted to show some respect to my mom, but you can't even do that? My parents can do what they want. That has nothing to do with me. I told you that I don't want to be around at a gloomy event like that, so I decided to stay home. Now, do you really have time to be texting me like this? Don't you have a speech to give or something like that? You're completely unbelievable. I have to go, but this isn't over at all. We are talking about this when I get home. You had better be ready for that. What the hell was that all about today? Why didn't you come to the funeral? I told you the reason for that already. Why do we have to talk about this again? Stop bringing things up that are already done. This is not even close to being done, whatever that might mean. I told you that this was something that we needed to talk about when I came home. What are you thinking? How can you be so heartless and not even come to my mom's funeral? What kind of person are you? Stop that! You're being way too rude right now! I am heartless? What about you? Weren't you being heartless when you just completely neglected me for weeks when your mom was sick? Is that not heartless to you? How do you even have the nerve to call me that? Stop comparing those two things. They're not the same at all. I was visiting my sick mother who has now passed away, by the way. It's a good thing that I did manage to spend as much time as possible with her towards the end. If I hadn't, I would be regretting it big time by now. But the way that you have been acting towards me and my parents throughout this whole ordeal is ridiculous. You didn't call them to check in on them. You didn't visit my mom when she was in the hospital. And then you got angry at me for even visiting her there in the first place. And now you couldn't even show up to her funeral? I just didn't even imagine that such a thing was possible. I almost don't even know what to say to you anymore. You're talking a hell of a lot for someone who says that they don't know what to say. You could start with saying that you're sorry for one, for neglecting me and now for keeping on bringing this up to me. I told you earlier that they're not my parents, so I don't have any reason to be at the funeral, which is a family affair. That's why I wasn't there, and now you have to just get over it. You really think that I'm supposed to apologize to you? After the way that you've been acting, I'm the one who's in the wrong and needs to apologize? That's exactly right. I do think that. You're out of your mind. I can't do this anymore. We're done. It's over. We need to get a divorce. I can't be married to someone who's this cold and callous when something this terrible has happened in my life. You want to divorce me? Are you really sure about that? I am very sure about that. I don't want to spend a single second longer than necessary with you. Fine then. Go ahead and do that. I don't care. Did you expect me to cry and beg for you to not do that? I've been cheating on you anyway. I already have someone new lined up and ready to go. Getting a divorce won't affect me in the least. What? You've been cheating on me? Since when? Does it even matter at this point? But if you have to know, it's been about a month or more, I guess. You know all the times I was going out because you were never home? Well, let's say that it wasn't friends who I was going out with. You get me? Right, I should have guessed something like that. But it doesn't matter now anyway. I want a divorce regardless. I'm gonna go and stay with my dad, but you need to move out of here within two weeks. And that is a generous timeline as well. Why should I have to move out of here? You get out instead. Because this is my house. I literally owned this before we ever got married. This isn't up for debate. Get out in two weeks or I will have the police remove you. And I suggest that you get in contact with the lawyer as well. I want this divorce over and done with as quick as possible. Hi there, Fred. How have you been doing recently? I know this might be a little strange for you that I am reaching out right now. It's been quite a while since we have spoken. Hi, Linda. You're right. It's probably been a few months. I guess the last time that we saw each other was at my mom's funeral. Yes, it was. 
and I am still so sorry that Leona didn't even show up. I was so ashamed as her mother at that moment. I don't know what on earth she could have been thinking. That's quite all right. She simply didn't care about it. There's no reason for you to feel bad about it, though. She did that all on her own, and it has nothing to do with you. Maybe so. But at the same time, I do feel like there is some responsibility that I should take since I was the one who raised her. Maybe there is something that I did wrong that caused her to become like this later in life. Linda, I really think that you're overthinking it too much. She's an adult, and she can make choices on her own. I don't think any of it is your fault. There is only so much that parents can do to determine what their children will be like in the future. I guess you're right. Maybe I shouldn't worry about it either. You really shouldn't. In any case, uh, what's going on? We haven't spoken since the funeral, and now that Leona and I are divorced, I didn't really expect you to text me. Is something the matter? Right. This might have been out of the blue a little bit. But you know that my husband and I always liked and appreciated you. And we're not very happy about what Leona did. I don't think that we have to be enemies or anything like that just because Leona and you are now divorced. We always got along well, so why should that have to change now? Right? I totally agree. What happened with Leona is just something that is between me and her. It shouldn't be something that affects the relationship between you and me, Linda. That's very nice to hear. The thing is, though, I have some bad news. David is in the hospital right now. What? Really? Is he okay? He's not doing too bad for the moment, but we had a bit of a scare. He was having very strong heart palpitations, and we thought that he might have a heart attack. Oh no, that sounds very serious. In the end, he didn't have a heart attack or anything, so he should be okay. But he's having some tests done to check the condition of his heart and his arteries. Maybe he got lucky this time but it's something that could always get worse again in the future. I'm very sorry to hear that about David. Maybe I can come and drop by to say hi sometime. Only if David isn't against that, of course. No, he would be happy to see you, I am sure. That was why I was messaging you in the first place. We wanted to ask you to come by. It might not be the most ideal circumstances, but we haven't seen each other for a while, so we can catch up a little, don't you think? So, I'm assuming that this means that you'll be there as well, Linda, is that right? Yes. If you come by tomorrow in the afternoon, we will all be here. If not, though, we understand that you must be busy. I'm actually off tomorrow so I can come at any time. You said the afternoon is good, right? So then, I'll make sure to come in the afternoon. Thank you so much, Fred. I know that David will be delighted to see you. He might never admit it, but he did start to think of you as a son himself when you were married to Leona. It's the least I can do, and it's not a lot of trouble either. I'll see you tomorrow then, Linda. Bye. Fred! It's so nice to see you again. Thanks so much for coming by. Not a problem at all, Linda. It's good to see you all again, too. How are you feeling, David? How's the old ticker going? Oh, it'll keep going yet. Just needs a little bit of rest, I think, and then everything will be back to normal. Did the doctor say anything yet? Have you gotten any results back as of yet? No, not just yet. But they told me that it's most likely cholesterol and the usual lifestyle issues. I do love me some fried foods, and maybe I should lay off them at least a tad for now. It wasn't as much of a problem when I was up and about more often, but these days I'm too old to be doing too much exercise. Hmm, that seems to be a big issue for lots and lots of people. It's a shame that all the food that tastes so good is also so bad for us. It would have been nice for it to be the other way around. Then we could all eat tasty things non-stop and still be healthy as can be. It's a damn shame, alright? But there's nothing that can be done about that, so no use complaining. I suppose you're right. So, is there any word on how long you might be in the hospital for? No, not just yet. They want to keep me around in here while the tests are getting done, just in case my heart starts acting up again, before they figured anything out. I think I'm fine, and as long as I take their advice to keep the fatty foods to a minimum, I should be discharged and I could go home even today. 
Oh, it's good that you're feeling well enough to go home, but it's always a better idea just to wait a little and get all the test results back before leaving. God forbid anything happens again once you go home, and that sort of thing can be easily prevented right now. I know, I know. I'm not going to just run out of the room or anything like that. I'll listen to the doctors, but I do wish that they would hurry it up getting those results. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mom. Dad. Sorry I am a little later than I planned to be here. The traffic was really bad on the way here. Oh, Fred, how are you? I didn't expect to see you here. Hey, Katie, everything is fine with me. Your mom messaged me last night and told me the news and asked me to come by and say hi. Luckily, I had a day off, so I was able to do that no problem. I only arrived myself a little while ago. Oh, I see. It's very nice of you to come by. And Dad, how are you feeling? Is everything okay? Everything's just fine, sweetie. I've never felt better. Come on, Dad. If that were true, you wouldn't be in the hospital right now. By the way, where is Leona? Has she come by yet? Um, to be honest, I don't think that she will come by at all. Especially if she's acting in that way. Why not? What makes you say that? Yeah, Fred. I know that you and Leona had a falling out, but this is our parents that you're talking about. I'm sure that my sister would go out of her way to come and visit. I wish that were the case, but I really don't think so. When my mom was sick and in the hospital, Leona didn't come by at all. Not even once. And instead, she would always get angry at me for spending too much time visiting my mom and not prioritizing her. When I tried to ask her if she wouldn't do the exact same as me if her parents were sick, she told me that no, she wouldn't. She said that if your time came, then it came, and there is nothing that she could do about it or to stop it. Wait, what? So she really said that? She wouldn't come because their time is up? I don't remember the exact words that she used, but it was something along those lines, yeah. Sorry, it's a little awkward for me to say something like that directly to your faces, but that is what she said. I thought that it might be better for you to know than to be constantly wondering whether or not Leona will come. Hmm, you're right, Fred. It is quite shocking to hear that she said that, but at least we won't be waiting for her to walk through that door now. And maybe it shouldn't be that much of a surprise anyway, considering that she didn't even come to your mom's funeral. Maybe not, yeah. Anyway, I have to head off somewhere else for the time being. I'll try and visit again, okay? I hope you're feeling better, David, and let's stay in touch. It's been good to see everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Hey, Katie, happy birthday. Thanks for inviting me out with you and everyone else. Fred! Thanks for coming! Don't mention it at all. I'm glad to have you around. How have you been? It's been a little bit since I have seen you. Has anything new been happening? Nothing new at all. Everything is just as it was the last time that we met. I guess that could be good news. Maybe? Or would you rather that something changed up a little bit more? I don't even know how to feel about it sometimes. The routine can definitely get boring from time to time, and I want there to be something that comes up and is a bit more exciting. But then, at the same time, I know that routine is good for the most part, and it's safe and consistent, and it means that nothing bad is happening. I guess you've had enough sudden bad things happen to last you for quite some time, huh? You could say that again. What about you, though? Anything new for you? Not too much. I am thinking about leaving jobs and going into teaching. I am sick of marketing, and I never feel like I am really contributing anything of value to the world. All we pretty much do is trick people into buying things that they don't need or make a bad product look like it's good and sexy. Wow, teaching. That's quite a big change though, isn't it? Why did you get the idea to do that? Well, sometimes in the office, I do help others and teach them how to do this or that, you know? And it's the only time when I actually feel a little bit fulfilled. They are very grateful and the look on their face is great to see. I want to be able to replicate that sort of thing with kids. That's the goal anyway. I haven't made any concrete steps towards the switch yet, but I have been thinking about it a lot. Wow, well, it sounds like a really great thing for you to do. I hope it all works out. Thanks. I hope so, too. 
Apart from that, I am just adjusting myself to the fact that I don't really have a sister anymore. Yeah, well, about that. Are you sure that's okay? Is it fine for me to be here? I mean, you did say that I'm coming instead of Leona. Is that really fine? She is your sister, and I'm her ex-husband. Something about me being here instead of her kind of feels off for me. Don't you even worry about that for a second. She showed us all very clearly how much she cares about any of us. And by that, I mean not at all. I know she would have even come at all, even if I had invited her. But just to be sure, I didn't send her an invite. It would have been awkward if she did show up in the end and you were here as well. But don't think too much about it. My mom and dad are inside and they also would much rather that you were here instead of Leona. Okay, well if you say so, then I'll try and relax. Should we go inside then? I want to talk to David for a little bit. Of course! Feel free to go in. I am just standing out here so people know where they are supposed to go. I will meet you in there soon enough. Okay, great. Then I'll see you in there shortly. There he is. Fred, over here. Hello. David, how's it going? You're looking a lot better than before. How's your heart? Is it all back to normal? It's even better than it was before I went to the hospital last time, if you would believe it. Like I told you before, the doctors really told me that I needed to change my diet if I wanted to escape getting a heart attack. Now, I of course love all the food that is bad for my heart, but I thought about Linda and Katie and what they would do if I were to die so suddenly, and well, it's not that much of a choice anymore, you know? I decided to take it seriously, and we even got a dietician to help me out with what I needed to eat. I've been going for regular checkups, and my cholesterol is much lower than before. I just need to keep this up and move around a little, and I'll be good for years to come. I'm very glad to hear that, David. It might be a bit of a shame to have to give up eating some foods that you love, but anything is worth it if you get to see the faces of your wife and daughter for just a bit longer, right? I'm glad that you've got it all under control then. But what about tonight? I mean, we are at a steakhouse right now. Is that going to be okay? Don't worry about him. He will be fine. Tonight is one of his treat nights. The dietician told us that he could do that once every few weeks. She just told me to make sure that he doesn't go too far overboard with the butter. Great, so you can enjoy the dinner with the rest of us. Oh, look, Katie's coming back in. I guess that means that everyone is here now. What do you think you're up to? Huh? What's your game? What are you talking about, Leona? And didn't I ask you to leave me alone? I don't have anything that I want to talk to you about anymore. I don't care about any of that. I do have something that I need to talk to you about. Why the hell were you at my sister's birthday dinner? That was supposed to be a family event. I saw the photos online. Oh, that. They asked me to come and celebrate with them, and so I did. Why does it matter? I didn't want to let them down and say no. Plus, I was free anyway, so there was no reason for me not to go. The reason for you to not go is because that is my family. You have no right to be getting involved with them now that we are divorced. What do you mean that I have no right to do that? I can do whatever I want, and so can they. Remember, they were the ones who invited me. It wasn't the other way around. And why wasn't I invited? They're my family, and they are choosing to invite you instead of me? That doesn't make any sense. Really? Maybe you should think about it a little more carefully. Don't you think that there's something that you might have done to push them away even more than before? What are you talking about? Nothing has happened between any of us. We never had a big fight or anything. It must be you. You must have been lying to them about something. Telling them lies about me, right? That's what you have been doing, isn't it? I haven't been doing anything of the sorts. You do remember that your dad was in the hospital, right? Yeah, sure. I remember something about that. Well, he's totally fine now, by the way. Not sure that you even care about that, though. He almost had a heart attack, though. It was fairly serious, and you didn't even show up to ask him how he was doing. Don't you think that maybe people didn't like that too much? But he's fine now, so what does it matter? 
I don't see what would have changed if I had been there in the hospital with him or not. There's no way that they would get so angry at me just because of something like that. And to be fair, no one has even messaged me at all since then. There has been no accusation or anger towards me. But they just didn't invite me to that dinner. Yeah, and then what? Are you starting to connect the dotted lines just yet? Or do you need some more time? Maybe I should help you out a little. What are you talking about? What dotted lines? What needs connecting? You really are clueless. This is going nowhere, so I'll fill you in on what happened. I visited your dad in the hospital. I mean, he did come to my mom's funeral, so of course I was going to do that. Your mom, of course, your dad, and Katie were all there when I was. We talked a bit about this and that and whatever but then told me that you had never shown up yet and wouldn't say if you were coming or not. I told him that you had told me previously that you wouldn't care if they got sick and that you most likely wouldn't come. What? Why would you tell them something like that? That had nothing to do with you. I told him that because it was the truth. I didn't want David to be expecting you to come by and then get disappointed when you didn't. And you were the one who said that you wouldn't really care about your parents if their health started to fail. But they didn't need to be told that. That was a secret. Well, then you should have kept that secret to yourself and not told me about it. Anyway, after that, we stayed in touch and they decided that they were just going to cut you off and not stay in contact anymore. They didn't like how heartless you had been towards me and my mother. And now you were doing the exact same thing to them too. They figured that there was no point in making a big thing of it and telling you. So instead, they just quietly stopped messaging you or inviting you out and all the rest of it. And you are no longer part of their lives. They're trying to cut me out of their lives without even telling me about it? What the hell kind of crap is that? I'm their daughter. Don't they care about me at all? I'm sure that they don't care about you, but you don't care about any of them either, do you? Even now, you're probably more upset because you didn't expect it, and it hurts your pride that others chose to cut you off and not the other way around. And on top of that, they didn't even bother to mention it to you. That's how little they care about you right now. I'm going to talk to them. I know that you just made up a bunch of other crap about me and told them that. They would never do this to me otherwise. I just know that they wouldn't. Knock yourself out. I don't care what you do anymore. I just don't believe this. This is ridiculous. I'm so mad I think I'm going to explode. Hey, what's going on? Just take a seat and calm down for a second. What happened to get you so worked up? It's my stupid family and my stupid ex-husband, Fred. He's been getting invited to all the family events instead of me. Can you believe it? They have all been inviting my ex instead of me. What kind of family does that? Wait, are you kidding me? Why would they do something like that? I thought you got along fairly well with your parents and your family. Are you saying that your ex got along with them more than you did? We got along just fine, I guess. But we were never super, super close. I never liked to go out of my way to see them because it was just such a pain, you know? But my ex, ugh, you should have seen him. He was obsessed with the idea of family. And I am talking about both mine and his. When his mom got sick, he was over there visiting her every single day that she was in the hospital. Right up until the day she died, pretty much. Like, hello? Why did he need to go so often? So his mom was dying in the hospital. I don't really know the guy, but that seems like the right thing to do, you know? To visit a dying relative. Oh god, don't tell me that you're just like him. He would leave me at home all the time and spend all the time with his mother. I didn't think that I had gotten married to a mama's boy like that. It was so frustrating. Well, if she was dying, I think that was really a pretty special circumstance. I can't really blame him for doing that. I would have done so too. And then I bet you would have gone to see my dad in the hospital when he had some heart issues then, right? Wait, what? When did your dad start having heart problems? Did he actually end up in the hospital? You didn't say anything about it. Yeah, he had something up with his heart a little while ago and ended up spending a week or so in the hospital. 
My sister told me that he almost had a heart attack, but not quite. I have no idea what that means, but I am sure that she just wasn't explaining what happened properly. And you didn't go to visit him, did you? You never mentioned anything about going to see him. No, I didn't. Why should I have gone to see him? Because he was in the hospital? Because he was sick? What do you mean? And based on what you just said before, your ex-husband went to visit him, didn't he? Um, yeah. He did go and say hi. He told me that before. I guess that's part of why they are angry at me and inviting him to things instead of me. And I don't blame them. What is wrong with you, Leona? Don't you care about your parents at all? If one of them is sick and in the hospital, then why wouldn't you go at least once to see how they are? You're lucky that nothing happened to them. But what if it did? You might have missed out on the last chance that you would have had to talk to them in person. Wouldn't that be something that you would then spend your whole life regretting? Man, what the hell are you talking about? I wanted to vent to you a little bit and now you're getting all sentimental about family on me just like my ex would have done. I didn't go to see my dad because there was no point in it. So what if he was sick? Am I a doctor? No! Was I going to help him somehow? No. I just would have wasted time getting there to see him and then probably I would have been in the way there while the doctors and nurses are trying to treat people. But if he had a heart problem, then he might have died. What if that had happened? Would you still not have wanted to go? That doesn't change anything at all in my view. If he was going to die, then he was going to die. What could I have done about it? And if he died, then it just means that it was his time to go, doesn't it? I don't see what my being there would have done to help it. Are you really this heartless? And now you're complaining and wondering why your family doesn't want you around and invited your ex instead? Isn't that obvious? Can't you work that out for yourself? What? Troy? What are you talking about? What do you mean I am heartless? You can't just say things like that to me. All I'm saying is that it's clear that no one in your family wants you around because you are unthinking and unfeeling. Do you even have a heart beating in that chest? I can't believe that you thought you would find sympathy from me in this when you came to talk about it. Well, you made a mistake. I think family is very important and I don't understand how you can be so callous to those who raised you. I want you out of my house, Leona, we're done. What? You cannot be serious. You're breaking up with me? Because of this? I sure am. I didn't realize that this was the kind of person you were, but now I can see it clearly. First, I felt bad for taking you away from your ex, even though you hadn't told me that you were married. But now I'm starting to think I did him a favor. Don't say that sort of thing about me. I divorced my husband for you. I gave up the home in which I had lived for years to come and stay with you. You can't just break up with me because you're mad that I am not obsessed with family like you seem to be. It's not that big of a deal. It's obviously not a big deal to you, but it's a big deal for me. I can't be together with someone like you. And so now I just need to pack my bags and leave? Where am I supposed to go? Maybe one of your family members will still let you stay with them. I wouldn't be so sure about that, though. I won't kick you out right away, though. You have a week to get your stuff together and find somewhere to live. It shouldn't take you so long because you don't even have that many things here. And where are you going to go for that week? Are you going to leave me here by myself? I'm going to go and stay with my parents. They're always happy to see me. You have one week to leave, Leona. Please, leave your key under the mat when you leave. Fred, I need to talk to you. I spoke to mom and dad and they really did say that they don't want anything to do with me anymore. I don't believe it. What am I supposed to do without my family? I have no one left. I can't live like this. What do you care anyway? You were the one who said that you don't care about them. Why does it matter to you then if they don't want you in their lives? You never made any effort for them in the first place. But this is different. I needed their help and they won't help me anymore. If they won't help me when I am this desperate, then who else in this whole world will? 
Well, that's usually how it goes when someone cuts you out of their life. They're not just going to turn around and let you back in or help you. Did you really expect them to do that? You can't neglect them and then only go to them when you want something from them. Of course I did! They're my family! They're supposed to help me when I am in trouble! And so they have to do that, but you don't have to do anything in return, right? Is that how you see it? Shut up already! Listen, maybe the divorce was a mistake. I want to try again to make us work. What do you say? What the hell are you talking about? Is this some kind of joke? No, this isn't a joke. I'm being serious. That was legitimately the last thing I expected to come out of your mouth. Of course the answer is no, but I really am surprised to hear you say that. No? Why would it be a no? Don't you love me? Isn't that why you wanted to marry me in the first place? Not anymore, I don't. I did before, sure, but a lot of things have happened since then. Time has passed, and you did cheat on me as well. I hope you haven't forgotten about that. That's only because you were neglecting me. That's not even really my fault to begin with. If you had looked after me like you were supposed to, then that would never have happened. Whatever, I wasn't neglecting you, and then you didn't care about getting a divorce at all. You were in fact quite happy about it because you already had a new man to move on to, right? So what happened to him? Why are you even entertaining the idea of getting back together with me? Oh, well, about that. I thought that he was going to be ready to be in a relationship, so I moved in with him as soon as I moved out of yours. But then he told me that he never planned on it being a proper thing. It was just about sex for him. Can you believe that he would say something like that to me? He is so heartless. I thought that there were feelings involved, but obviously I was wrong. He told me to leave when I got angry at him, but I had nowhere to stay. I tried to ask my mom and dad, but they said no. And Katie said no to me as well. So, you've got no home right now then. Are you sleeping on the streets? That is where you belong after all. I can't believe the stupid story that you're telling me. I'm staying in a cheap hotel for the time being. But I will need to stay somewhere more permanently, of course. So I was thinking that maybe we could move back in together, just like before. It will be a win-win for both of us, right? I mean, you didn't actually want to get that divorce, did you? I can't believe you're actually asking me this. We're over, Leona. We're divorced, and I did want that divorce. I was the one who asked for it. I hate you. Your parents and your sister hate you. None of us are going to help you out of this situation. You can't be heartless and cruel to everyone and then expect them to be kind and compassionate back to you. Everyone is sick of you and your callousness. You shouldn't have been stupid enough to assume some guy who you were having an affair with was just going to up and marry you or look after you. But he acted like he was going to! How else could I have known what he was really like? He tricked me by what he said and how he acted to me! Then he must have been as big a liar as you are. What's it to me? But then where am I going to live? I can't stay in this hotel forever. I don't know where to go. I don't know where you should go either, and I don't care. There is no way that we're getting back together after the way that you've been behaving. You are cold and heartless, and I don't know how I didn't spot that about you sooner than it came out. But now everyone has become aware of what you're really like, even your family members. This is what happens when you treat others like they don't matter, Leona. Soon enough, you end up not mattering to them either. After that, Leona kept begging both me and her family members to give her a place to stay. Of course, we all kept refusing and she had to remain in her hotel for a while. She even came to my house later on with some bags and boxes and just tried to move in without even saying anything. I don't know what she was thinking, but she might have thought that I didn't change the locks when she moved out. Luckily, I did. I came home to her on the porch trying to get in, and when I confronted her, she refused to leave. In the end, I had to call the police to get them to remove her for trespassing. Later on, I found out from Katie that Leona had been lying about the reason she and her former lover broke up. She told me that it was because he was only interested in sex and never had any intention of being in a relationship with Leona from the start. However, that is not true, and that makes sense since he did invite her to live with him. It turns out that Leona went on a rant about how angry she was that I had been invited to her sister's birthday and she hadn't, 
and when her new boyfriend asked her why that was, she was stupid enough to tell him the full story. He also realized just what a cold and heartless woman Leona was, and decided to break up with her and kick her out of his house. I haven't heard anything from her since I called the police to kick her out for trespassing, but I'm sure that she's still moving from person to person, trying to use them for whatever she needs from them. Or else, she's just living in that cheap hotel trying to get by on her own. As for me, I'll still stay in touch with Linda, David, and Katie. Sometimes, Linda and David make a point to visit my dad and keep him company whenever they can. Dad is still very much upset about my mom's passing, but it's good that he has some friends to help him through it. I also try to meet up with him whenever I can to keep him company and just support him in any way that I can. It'll take a long time for him to get over this, and the same for me, but the two of us will be there for each other. Hey Maddie, it's been a while. I'm gonna do you a huge favor. I'm gonna park my beautiful BMW in that parking lot that you guys own. I need somewhere to leave my car for a while, thanks. Karen? What are you talking about? This is so out of the blue. That's not really a favor, and we don't need you to do anything like that. Ow, oh, there's no way trying to talk your way out of this. I already know. I heard that you own a parking lot right in the center of the city. I need to use it, like, really badly. You can use it if you pay for it. I'm also not the owner. That parking lot was passed down to my husband from his father. So, my husband's currently the one who operates that parking lot. You're gonna have to pay like everyone else if you're gonna use it. I am not gonna pay you guys a single cent as I'm just doing you guys a favor. The parking lot is gonna look so much better and it'll attract more people with my beautiful BMW parked there. No, thank you. We don't need the parking lot to look good or anything. It's one of our sources of income and we can't just let you use it for free. I really need a place to leave my car though. Badly? Stop being so stingy, okay? I haven't told you this, but my husband got transferred to an overseas branch, so he'll be gone for the next three years. I actually decided that I'm gonna go with him, so I need to keep my car somewhere safe. Okay, well that's nice. I had no idea about that. I guess it'll be lonely here without you guys. One of our friends is going to rent out our house while we're gone. The problem is they said they want to use our garage to park their car. Which means I need a place to leave my BMW for a while. That's why I thought I'd do you guys a favor by parking my car in your parking lot. So there, I've explained why I need to park my car there now. It's okay, right? Why do you keep saying that you're doing us a favor though? How is this a favor? It sounds like you just want a free parking space. And I'm sorry, but that's just not possible. Why are you being so damn unreasonable? I'm like, totally doing this for you. This is why no one likes you, you know? Karen, I'm not being unreasonable at all. I'm saying that you can park your car there if you pay for it just like everyone else. You can pay the monthly fee if you're planning to leave it there for a while. It'll be cheaper than paying for it per day. How does that sound? Uh, what? Did you just say a monthly fee? You're an absolute idiot if you think that I'm paying you any money. Just let me park my car there for free. Did you not listen to anything that I just said to you? I've been telling you that it's not possible to park your car there for free. Why in the world would I have to pay money to park my car there? We're friends, right? I can't just give you a parking spot for three years because we know each other. Why not? Is that how you treat your friends? I've always done you so many favors in the past. Well, I don't know about that. I don't remember you doing me any favors at all. You seriously need to be more grateful that I'm your friend. Also, the parking in this area is just too damn expensive. It's ridiculous. It costs like $350 to leave my car park for just a month. Do you not realize just how much I'm going to have to pay if I leave my car for three entire years? I guess it would come out to around $8,000. Exactly. I'm not going to waste that much money just to park my car. That would just be stupid. And why would I do that when I can just park my car for free at your place? You are not going to use the parking space for free. Come on. Give me a 
deal, Maddie. Well then, how about $200 per month? That's much cheaper than the other parking spaces in the area. I think I can ask my husband to lower the price to around $200 for you, but that's the best I can do. What? That's still such a ridiculous price just to park my car. It should be more like $3 a month. You're joking, right? Did you just say $3? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I'm not going to pay any more than that. You shouldn't be charging me any money at all. That's just not going to happen, Karen. The parking lot that we own is actually very popular. It's usually full during the day, so we don't need your help. We can't have you taking up one of the parking spaces for three years anyway and not for free. We would be losing a lot of potential income and we need to earn a living too, you know. Who cares about your income? There's plenty of other parking spaces that you guys are making money from. Did you not think about me and my financial situation at all? I need you to give me the space for free. Why can't you just understand that? Would you please just calm down a little? What you're asking me to do is ridiculous. Also, I don't understand why you're not upset about me when I'm leaving for three years. Do you not have any emotions at all? You're not going to be able to see me for three entire years. Have you even organized a farewell party for me? I'm expecting a big surprise party at the very least. I don't think that we're that close to be completely honest with you. I wasn't thinking about hosting or organizing anything like that. Oh my god, I can't believe it. You better start organizing it now then. I'm expecting you to invite lots of people as I'm very popular among our mom friends and you know that. You better not disappoint me. Um, wait, I'm not going to do this. Just stop talking. You are going to organize my farewell party whether you like it or not. You should be happy you get to organize this. Okay, fine. How about a farewell dinner at the Chinese restaurant downtown? I don't want to go to a cheap place like that. Take me to an expensive French or Italian restaurant. Somewhere that does a full course meal. I have a reputation to upkeep, you know. I can't be going to cheap and dirty restaurants. That sounds like it's going to be very expensive. Oh, it better be expensive. I'm going to be leaving for three years. It better be a fancy farewell. I also have no intention of paying for it, so you guys better take care of that. That's not really for you to decide, is it? It's a little rude to ask us to pay for you too, isn't it? Especially when you're asking people to come. Just hush. I am not paying anything and that's that. I also don't want any flowers or fruit or things like that for my farewell gift. I want a nice watch and some jewelry that I can take with me. It better be expensive, otherwise I'm not accepting it. You're sounding like a diva right now. I don't even have to organize a farewell party for you. I'm just letting you know so that the gifts don't go to waste. My name is Maddie. I'm 35 and I'm a housewife. My husband runs a real estate agency that was passed down to him by his father. Karen is one of our neighbors and, well, she's known for her strong-minded temperament. As you can probably tell, she's not the easiest person to get along with. Somehow, she managed to find out that my husband owns a parking lot as part of his side business. And she even demanded that I organize her a farewell party. Who does that? So anyway, I caved and did my best to invite some people over for a small farewell dinner. Unfortunately, she didn't enjoy it at all, and this is how she reacted towards me. What the hell was that pathetic farewell dinner, Maddie? It was literally the worst night of my life. Literally. You're the one who organized it, so you better apologize to me right now. Uh, Karen, I just organized something just like you told me to. I don't have anything to be sorry about. I booked a French restaurant just like you asked me to. I even got you a necklace as a farewell gift. The French restaurant you took me to doesn't even have a Michelin star. How could you take me somewhere like that? I bet you were trying to embarrass me in front of everyone by taking me to a pathetic French restaurant. 
I had no idea that you wanted to go to a fancy restaurant like that, though. You could have told me earlier. And the gift that you got for me was pathetic as well. I wanted a necklace from Bulgari. What the hell was that junk you got me? That's way out of my budget. And the necklace that I got for you was actually pretty expensive. Well, it wasn't what I wanted. I broke down into tears after I got home because I was so disappointed. This is the first time that I've been let down this badly. Well, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I had no idea. I really did do my best to host a nice farewell dinner for you. If you really feel sorry about this, let me use the parking space. That's the only way I'm going to forgive you. Oh my god, this again? I thought we were done with this topic. You ruined my farewell dinner and made me cry. I'm going to park my car there. You owe me. I already checked with my husband, but he said that you can't park there for free. Oh my god, why are you so stingy? All I want to do is park my car there while I'm gone. It's not up to me, unfortunately. He's the one that runs that parking lot. Well, you need to convince him somehow. We have to leave by next week. I don't have anywhere else to leave my car. Have you tried searching online for parking spaces in the area? I can help you find somewhere if you really need. That's enough. There's no point talking to you. I'm just going to go and park my car in your parking lot tomorrow. Wait, what? Were you not listening to what I just told you? You better not ask me to pay a single cent. If you do, I'm going to make you regret it very much. Just let me park there for three years. It's not that long at all, right? Then I'll forgive you for this horrendous farewell dinner you hosted. What you are saying is just insane, Karen. I hosted a farewell dinner just like you asked me to. Now you're mad at me and ask me to use my husband's parking lot for free. Just shut the hell up. You're really starting to get on my nerves. Please don't park your car there without our permission. My husband's going to be really mad if you do. That's not my problem at all. You deal with him. I also want you to clean my car once a month. Make sure you start up the engine once in a while so it's not left sitting there for years. Why should I have to do that? It's your car, so it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility because it's your parking lot. Please don't be irrational like this. It's not a good idea at all. You're going to regret this. You better not get my car towed, by the way. If you do, I'm going to come back and destroy your car to get back at you. I'm pretty sure that my husband's going to get your car towed if you go through with this. Please just find somewhere else to leave your car. Tell him that I'll destroy his car and home if he gets my car towed. I warned you both, okay? I'm gonna go and park my car there now. Oh, it feels so good to be back home. I miss this place so much. Karen, you're back. Yeah, I just got back. My flight was this morning. Is this your first time back in three years? I came back once a year, actually. I just didn't tell you about it because I didn't see the point. Thanks for letting me park my car at your place, by the way. That was really helpful of you. I'm sorry, but what are you talking about? Stop acting like you don't know. You let me park my car at your husband's parking lot, remember? I still don't know what you're talking about. You didn't end up parking your car there in the end, right? I thought you decided against it at the last minute. Wait, what are you talking about? I parked my car there. I'm sure about it. Are you really sure? I haven't seen it there. Not once in the last three years since you left. Wait, what's going on? Oh, you're just trying to pull a prank on me, right? Not at all. Where did you park? It's the parking lot right next to the bakery, right? That's where I parked my car. Oh, no. Our parking lot is actually a bit further down that street. Ours is next to the post office. Wait, wait, wait. What did you just say? You're not serious, right? Why would I lie to you about this? You must have left your car in the wrong parking lot. Oh, my God. What have I done? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, no, Maddie, no. 
They charge quite a lot at that parking lot, huh? You left your car there for three years, right? Oh, I wonder how much it's gonna be. My husband knows the owners of that parking lot, actually. A guy called Gary owns it. I'll see if you can get in touch with him about it. Give me a second. Oh my god! Please let it be there, and please don't make him charge me! Please tell him that this was all a huge mistake. Okay, so apparently your car is still there. Oh my god, okay, that's great to hear. But there's more. Your car's been clamped, so you're gonna need to pay the fees to get rid of that before getting it back. He said that his parking rates are around $30 per day. So I think that means it's gonna end up costing around $30,000 for the three years that you parked there. Do you just say $30,000? You gotta be kidding me! Yeah, I was kind of surprised to hear that figure too. You could buy so many things with that kind of money. You're friends with the owner of the parking lot, right? Tell him that he's being ridiculous. I want my car back and I'm not gonna pay a single cent. This is all a misunderstanding anyway. I'm not friends with him at all. I just know him. He's also not the kind of guy who's gonna be swayed so easily. You're just gonna have to talk to him directly. I can't believe it. None of this would have happened if you just let me use your parking lot in the first place. Stop trying to blame this on me. You only have yourself to blame. I also think you're gonna be in more trouble. You broke some kind of traffic rule by leaving your car there for three years. The maximum period of time that you can use that parking lot is 48 hours. No, you're lying. You're the one to blame for all of this. You pay for the $30,000. You tricked me into parking my car there. I'm not going to pay anything because I didn't do anything wrong. All right, that's enough. Shut the hell up. Wait, what did you just say to me? I told you that I've had enough. You really need to shut your mouth and stop being so annoying. What is with your tone all of a sudden? Why the hell are you being so damn arrogant and stubborn, huh? This is all your fault, yours, not mine. Quit putting the blame on me. You left your car parked there for three years without permission. You're also the one that parked in the wrong parking lot. All of this is your fault, you moron. Try thinking about the consequences before doing something so stupid next time. Well, I just didn't have any other choice. I needed somewhere to leave my car. Stop making up all these excuses and just pay up, you rotten witch. I knew you were an idiot, but this has gone too far. Is this really you, Maddie? You're usually much more calm and kind. I've lost my temper because of you. I did my absolute best to stay calm, but I've had enough now. Flip it! You annoyed Gary because of what you did, too. You need to go and apologize to him and pay what you owe right now. Go! I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have been like that. You also need to sort out your frickin' attitude if you're planning on living with us in this neighborhood. Me and everyone else are not gonna let you act like the queen you thought you were. Things have changed big time around here while you were gone. Oh my god. I'm really sorry about my arrogant attitude in the past as well. I'll make sure to fix that as well. I'll also go and apologize to Gary right away. I make sure to pay him all the money that I owe. Please don't be like this, Maddie. I'm really sorry, okay? Yeah, you better do that. Go on then. The next time you text me, you would better tell me that there are no issues here. Okay, I will. What are you waiting for then? Go! Go! I apologize for losing my temper there and using some foul language. It's been a while since I lost my temper like that. Karen headed over to the parking lot after that conversation and apologized to Gary right away. Gary was very kind and although he could have, he decided not to sue her as long as she paid the $30,000 she owed for parking in his lot for three years. Karen's husband had asked one of his friends to look after his car for the three years while he was abroad. He was absolutely furious once he found out the truth about what had happened, and I heard that they're currently on the brink of getting a divorce. 
He seems to have no intention of helping her pay the $30,000 that she owes Gary. Karen is currently working multiple jobs to try to earn the money that she owes. She tried to ask her friends for help, but nobody did. It seems like nobody liked her and everyone had forgotten about her when she left the country for three years. She really should have thought about the consequences of her actions before going through with it. I heard she's living a lonely life all by herself. So here's to a lesson learned for her, hopefully. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and pressing the like button.